and today for Tarot Tuesdays we're switching to astrology because we had a solar eclipse in Scorpio early on today and solar eclipse is a new moon where the moon and the sun align but when the luminaries are close to the lunar nodes which are imaginary points on the crossing of their ecliptics meaning their path we have a total or partial eclipse and this one the moon is partially eclipsing the sun eclipses are portals and as such is an energetic door where people or things can come in or get out so a solar eclipse is a new moon and steroids and new moons are new beginnings and it doesn't mean that it's going to happen the day off meaning today but it sets the energy that has a lifespan of about six months till the next eclipse season because this eclipse is in scorpio there's hiding intuition as the bell gets thin right in time for halloween now because it's in two degrees of scorpio the number two is numerologically associated with duality so themes around couples partnerships and choices makeups and breakups the eighth house we're dealing with themes of death and rebirth and themes associated with this cycle like also sex and intimacy in psychology we call these energies eros and thanatos the creative and destructive principles now everybody wants a new life but a new life can cost you the old one and here is where we offer resistance to change and in the letting go because a rebirth implies a metaphorical dying first yet eclipses help you release that which no longer serves you and holds you back purging you from fears projections and so on and freeing you to move forward with renewed energy especially because this eclipse is illuminating the south node which is all about the letting go now the eighth house is the second house of the seventh house so we're dealing with issues related with financial seventh house of others people seventh house like inheritance taxes loans joint finances etc and eclipses are revelations so new information can affect the course of events now this eclipse doesn't happen alone since it conjuncts venus yet another indication that this eclipse is about relationships and the moon with venus is in the mood of love but venus is in fall in scorpio as scorpio is mars house so venus is operating with mars tools and has a darker quality since mars is a warrior venus has more of an as an by where pain and pleasure can intermingle but this is not limited to the realm of intimacy as scorpio is also pluto's house and this pertains to the transformational process of confronting and overcoming past traumas in order to relate better so it's uh, it hurts good <laughs> there's a sense of vulnerability and rawness to this eclipse on the other hand venus represents money so you can expect news on the economic front now venus is kasimi which means that it's on the same degree of the sun and like combust when it's just near so here venus is like crowned by the rays of the sun which is usually very positive except that here is in the malefic house of scorpio and eclipse so it's a mixed bag of energies with the good the bad and the ugly now like blessings in disguise all of this while squaring pluto the other ruler of scorpio which is the planet of transmutation again another phoenix birth theme of death and rebirth and squares are challenging forcing us to change for our own good but eclipse is but this eclipse is also trining um, mars and tries our harmonious aspects in spite of mars being stationary meaning standing still because it's about to change direction and go retrograde from our perspectives as planets don't actually do that it's just like a matter of speed like when a car passes another giving the impression that the slower car is going backwards this energy makes the energy of the planet intensify and go over and resolve issues that need to be addressed in the case of the warrior planet this can bring about repressed anger and because it's in the air mental sign of gemini the twins which are not always on the same page so expect discussions and back and forth over the issues the eclipse also 
Queen cooks Jupiter in fiery areas and Jupiter is the great benefic. So we're confident, but Queen cooks are annoying. So we shouldn't push the envelope either and we should make necessary adjustments. Jupiter is about to go retrograde, reviewing recent events and simultaneously squaring Mars, also ruler of Aries, which benefits action, but Mars isn't moving and is squaring Neptune as well, where there can be some illusion or confusion regarding what action to take. And eclipses are times to lay low anyway and let the universe execute its plan. Mars is also quincuxing Pluto, which recently turned direct, adding to the intensity and is squaring the eclipse, adding frustration to our urges, as transformation is not an overnight processes, process and in time we will see what is actually meant to be. Behind the scenes, there is a beautiful grand trine between Mars, Mercury, the planet of communications, pushing for cooperation at 22 degrees Libra, which is a master number also associated with transformation and Libra, yet another indication of relationship themes. And they're trining Saturn, the planet of structures who just went direct, helping us to make plans and take responsibility. So this gives an overall positive vibe for setting foundations and making plans. Though Saturn, the planet of karma, and reap what you sow, bring it both praises or punishment, depending on the case, squares Uranus, the god of upheaval, surprises, expect and expected energy. So change is in the horizon. And because this is in conjunction with the North Node, which we can think of our North Stars, uh, change is not only due, but of the essence. Mercury is also queen cooking Neptune in its own house of watery Pisces, which mixes fantasy with reality, making it hard to discern and focus with so much going on, and making things, making this a better time for meditation going inwards. Now, not everyone is going to experience this energy in the same way as it depends on your individual chart. And we can say that people with ascendant, sun, moon, or stelliums, which are clusters of three planets or more, on early degrees of Scorpio or fixed signs like Taurus, Leo, and Aquarius, are going to feel this the most, at its aspects, the quadrants of the placement with squares, opposition, or conjunctions on the most important sectors of life, which are self, home, relationships, and career depending on the case. Thanks for watching and see you on the next Astro video for the following eclipse on election day. Oh my God. Thank you. Bye now.